Hello, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Luna, you can call me Elle. I feel a little bit rusty. I haven't done this in three years, uh, so I'm a little bit out of practice, but that's fine. We're just gonna work through it and I'm just gonna chat. I'm just gonna chat and it's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. So like I said, I haven't done YouTube in about three years and it's kind of sucked for me. Not the last three years. Mm, no, no, it hasn't. It has not sucked for me. But before then, I kind of was making videos and it just, it wasn't something that I was really gelling with anymore. And I think the point I'm at in my life right now, I regret not having documented my life for the past three years because some nice stuff's happened and I really look back at my social media as kind of like a journal for me. So it's, it's nice to be able to have those things to look back on and I think it sucks a little bit. I have a big chunk missing from the last three years. So I'm just gonna try and jump back on the horse and if people watch it, wicked. If not, my mum's always gonna watch this, isn't she? So realistically, this is just like a delayed FaceTime with me and my mum. So I thought the best place to start with this was a little Q&A slash get to know me. I put some questions on Instagram. This is my handle. Uh, it's pretty much my handle on everything. So if you wanna go follow me there, go for it. If you don't already follow me there, how did you find this video? That's a genuine question. How did you do it? I don't know. Um, but yeah, ask for some questions on Instagram and then I have written them all down because everything is better once you've handwritten it yourself. Like everything just feels a little bit more like whatever that hand gesture means. You know what I mean. So I thought I'd just go through some of these and we just have a nice little chat and you can get to know me basically. So first question is what did you study at college slash A levels slash uni? I did all three. I went to sixth form for my A levels. I did sports health and social care, biology, psychology, English combined, but then I failed biology miserably. I literally got a U. Uh, that was at AS level. So I then picked up general studies. I got very average grades at my A levels because I didn't really enjoy the subjects. So I applied for uni to do sports science uh, with those A levels in mind. But then the day after I applied for uni, I was like, I don't want to do this. So I then applied for a vocational college, which was literally just the other side of town from where I was going. Uh, and I did a creative media diploma there. And that was all kind of this kind of stuff, setting up cameras, setting up tripods, editing, all of that kind of stuff. And I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed, I think I was, I was much more suited to like the vocational kind of thing rather than academia. But then I did go to uni uh, and then had to do all the academia stuff. I studied media studies at UEA. I still live in Norwich. I love this city so much. It's not even a city. It's a city in the sense that we have a cathedral, but in every other sense, it's just a big town and it's lovely and it's historic and it's cute and I love being here. Next question is what is your dream pet and what would you call them? I go through phases with dream pets and, and what I'd like, but at the moment and for a while now, I'm very brutal for a dog so there's that I'd love to have a Dalmatian or a Great Dane I had a Great Dane as a kid and I just I love big dogs but also on the flip side of that I would really like to have an Italian Greyhound just like a little skinny cute ratty ideally grey but I'm not fussy little Italian Greyhound I think that'd be really cute because they're, they're kind of cat sized and I know I just said I wanted a dog, but I'd like an Italian Greyhound and um, what would I call them? Probably Snoopy. I think Snoopy is a wicked name for a dog. I think it works. Also, me and my uh, partner Alex, we collect vintage Snoopy mugs. So that's kind of, kind of cute with all of that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The next question is how much has changed since you last made videos? A lot has changed. I feel like I am not in the same kind of chapter of my life anymore as I was when I was doing it before and that comes with a different everything doesn't it like I don't go to uni anymore I live mm, okay I still live in Norwich but uh, I've got a whole different group of friends I've got a different job just I think my whole life has has pretty much completely changed like it's it's just moved on do you know what I mean um I also think like social media has totally changed since when I was making videos before, I think it was very much like you make your friends and you kind of network like that. And I suppose it, I suppose it is kind of the same, but maybe I'm just not in those circles anymore. So a lot has changed. It's, there was a whole pandemic. Do you know what I mean? Like life has changed. It's changed for everyone. And then following on from that, the next question is, are you still friends with people you were friends with from YouTube before? Um, yes. And then also no. Uh, there are some people that I've been friends with online since I was like 
12, which is really, really lovely. Um, but then shit happens, doesn't it? So there have been fallouts and it's, do you, do you know what I mean? Like I was a teenager when I made YouTube videos beforehand. So those kind of friendships just aren't like, they're not concrete and they're not forever friendships and no friendship should should be gone into thinking it's gonna be a forever friendship. I think that's too much pressure to put on something. On one hand, yes, I, I do have friends that I'm still friends with online and on another hand, hell no. <laughs> And there's that answer. What is your go-to coffee order? And I really like this question because I'm a coffee girl. I worked at Starbucks for probably about six years, maybe five, I can't really remember. Um, it was all a blur. So whilst I was working at Starbucks, it would be a soy vanilla latte, just nice and easy. Probably stick an extra shot in there because I do have a bit of a caffeine dependency and that's just, it's one of the hazards of the job, isn't it? It's just something that I've kind of dragged on now that I don't work in coffee anymore. So nice and simple. Um, but then when I moved to a different coffee shop, we didn't have soy milk there. So I'd be an oat milk mocha kind of girl because realistically, I didn't actually like the coffee we served there. So having a mocha just meant it was really sweet and I didn't have to taste the coffee. But now I think I have moved out of my coffee era and I now I'm a matcha drinker and it is quite possibly the best thing to come out of 2022 for me. There's a store in Norwich called Bird and Blend. I think there's a couple of other stores like around the country, but the, the one in Norwich is just, mwah. The, the girls in there are amazing. The tea is really, really good. They're all super helpful. They're all super chatty. They're all super jolly. It's really, really lovely. So it's like going to get my matcha before I go and work is like, it's not just getting a coffee. It's like, I'm going in for a chat as well. It just, it feels really nice, so yeah. Oh, what my regular order is. Uh, at the moment, it is probably a salted caramel matcha with a pump of cinnamon in it and maybe a pump of vanilla if I feel like I really need the sugar that day. <laughs> the next question is, what is your favorite hair color you've had so far? And it's not this. This I've done literally today. So it's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit pinker than I'd like. I do normally like having a little bit of root regrowth. We've got some real curtains going on here, haven't we? I really like having like orangey tones in my hair because that is completely different to pretty much how I dress. I don't really own anything that's orange. Do I? Maybe that's a lie. I don't really own much that's that's like warm tones. Uh, so it's quite nice to have the contrast there. It makes dressing feel like my outfits are a little bit more put together than they actually are. Also orange is just like the least maintenance hair I've, I've ever had. I used to have silver hair and oh my God, that one. It, it was the worst because not only would you have to go to a salon to get your hair bleached because like you you'd need to lift all of the color. But if you even think about putting purple shampoo on your hair for a microsecond too long, shit's purple. For me, personally, I found white hair was the most, most difficult thing, but lilac hair, that was also a really good era for me. I think, I think we could bring the lilac back and it could work. Maybe, maybe it was summer? No, I really like orange. I'm not done with orange. This isn't even orange, is it? This, this is, would you say this is peach or is this like candy flossy at the moment? It's definitely a little bit more orange at the bottom. It doesn't matter. The next question is, what is your astrology big three? And you're not allowed to bully me for this. You're not. I know that my personality is an acquired taste for some people uh, and I will be taking no personal responsibility for that. That is because of the stars. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like that's, that's not my problem. I am a Leo sun, an Aries moon and a Gemini rising and yeah, do you know what, like, you meet me and you think, yeah, it makes sense, but also, it makes sense, do you know what I mean? Like, it's, um, it's not the best big three to have. Is it the worst? No. No, 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 it could be much worse. But it's, uh, yeah, do you know what I mean? I want to say take it with a pinch of salt, but don't, because that, that's literally me. The next question is, how did you get into social media? And I really like this question because I don't get to go into my backstory very much. So basically, I used to be a gymnast when I was a kid. Uh, I was an elite gymnast. I did competitive gymnastics. And my dad would film my gymnastics and we would edit them together and put them on YouTube. So that's originally how it started. I put everything up on YouTube that way. And then when I think I got to about 14, 15, I was making, YouTube videos just kind of like this like a sit down bedroom chat kind of video but they were like I got bullied for making YouTube videos when I was a teen obviously like I've just told you my big three like obviously I got bullied do you know what I mean but also sometimes I will look back at those YouTube videos uh, and I'll be like they were that bad that I would bully me too like you know what I mean like you get it I was 15 and thought I was like really quirky awkward do you know what I mean 
it, it just, it wasn't great. So from there, I kind of like had an Instagram account as well. And I was like trying to do the whole like Tumblr grunge thing. Uh, I'll pop a little picture of my feed from maybe when I was like 17. Yeah, it, yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, so I did that kind of thing. And then they kind of ran alongside each other uh, until I was at uni. And then at uni, I really dropped off making YouTube videos because I was mentally ill. <laughs> it was not a good time. I couldn't hack it. And also like, there was nothing in me to be able, like you can't pour from an empty cup is what I'm saying. And my cup was very empty. So I kind of carried on with Instagram just cause that was like more of the social one and kind of the one that was more manageable. And then when the pandemic hit, that's when TikTok started blowing up. So I jumped on that and I've been doing TikTok and Instagram for the, like the last couple of years. Uh, and I really enjoy it. And it's kind of, it's made me come out of my shell a lot more TikTok has. I feel like I can I can be myself and I can chat the way I would chat to a mate kind of thing. Uh, and I've never had that kind of outlook, outlook, output. Um, I've never had a space for my personality online, even though I used to make YouTube videos, they were used to be like super scripted and loads and loads and loads of jump cuts just do you know what, to, like to make them watchable kind of thing. The next question is, when did colorful eyeliner become your personality? And I feel like this one's a little bit backhanded, but I'm also gonna be taking it with a pinch of salt because it is my personality. I don't know if you can see, but my eyeliner of the day is like, I've gone for like a, a rose gold metallic flick up the top and then I've popped some rhinestones on. I don't, I really don't know if you can see because the light might be just covering them, making them not reflect, do you know what I mean? I think again, that was around the pandemic time. Like I I think I originally followed Glisten Cosmetics uh, and then they released like a pastel liner bundle. Uh, so I bought that and it, it just kind of went from there. Cause I've always been a black eyeliner girl, like since year eight, like we've all been through that little emo phase. I just never grew out of it. And then once I found out you could get colored eyeliners, I just started doing it like that. And I really enjoy it. I love putting makeup on every day. There's something like I feel is quite ritualistic about like sitting down with all my makeup and going, right, what am I doing? today like I love that I feel like that's like some a way that I can be creative every day that like feels like there's no kind of pressure on there do you know what I mean next question is what are you proud of personal growth wise in 2022 I think that's a really nice question but I don't really know how to answer it straight off the bat I think in 2022 I became a better friend to people I feel like I became a lot more empathetic and about how my actions impact other people. Also, I think I became a more productive person. I think the, the pandemic really kind of pushed that back for me after like doing uni and that kind of thing. I wasn't really doing much. <laughs> I don't know how that sounds. But then I think 2022 was where I kind of picked up the pace a little bit and realized that like nothing changes if nothing changes. I've got to do something different here to make something different in my life. So I think that was something that I was really proud of uh, personal growth wise. And three's a charm. What else can I say I'm proud of? I think I'm proud of my self-confidence as in like the way I back myself with the decisions I make. I used to be a really anxious person so big decisions weren't like the best for me um, but I feel like nowadays I'm a little bit more like no nope, this feels good let me go for it. Gut feelings is that what I'm trying to say? I feel like I trust my gut more. How to make friends in your 20s? I don't know I'm still trying to do it myself. I think something that I want from this channel is the fact that like I'm I'm 25 now like I am literally quite literally in my mid 20s. I'm at a stage where I'm navigating life that I never really pictured myself doing. I never really thought I was going to be able to make it to 25. And also like this is kind of the start of my adulthood. So I feel like there's a lot of pressure on me to be doing things and making steps forward. But I kind of want this channel to be able to be documenting how I'm navigating 25 mid 20s do you know what i mean and i actually think something that i'm not entirely great at is making friends and i think i think we're a lot of us are in the same boat there like it's tricky it's tricky because like my whole life i've grown up and we've been in school and social clubs and that kind of thing there's always like groups of people that you can be around once you leave those kind of like academic and extracurricular activities meeting new people is hard i think the friends that i've made 
in the last year or so have kind of all been down to chance like one of my close friends Hope who I've recently met like well met last year I met her at a New Year's Eve party and we've been friends from there and another one of my friends Lolly she actually lives in the building across from me but we just we took each other's phone numbers because we kept bumping into each other and also like I used to work with her boyfriend so we were, we were like mutual in that respect but just I think my go-to advice for me in making friends going forward would be just take a chance put the effort in and I like to arrange like one-on-one -on -one drinks that's a nice way to do it you want to go for coffee do you want to go get a drink like conversation easy you can talk about your surroundings that kind of thing and then just go from there if the vibe works is that helpful i don't know so the next question i have is what's a brand deal you regret or wasn't what you expected <sighs> i don't i don't want to say anything that will get me in trouble so i'm not saying names uh and i'm just gonna give like a overview of it basically it was when i was like a baby content creator i was in uni i just kind of learned that i could i could be making money from from doing doing what I do. And I had a brand come to me and they wanted to pay me to make content for them for a year. And they wanted, I think, six posts in a year and they offered me like more money than I'd ever earned before. So obviously I was like, hell yeah, especially because I use that brand quite frequently as well. So I was like, this is something that's gonna be good. They agreed to pay me every three months of that year, so quarterly. And it wasn't until the seventh month when I had made, I think five pieces of content for them that they actually paid me um, because they were, I think they were asking for the, the latest bit of content. And I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not gonna be making any more because you've, you've not compensated me for the, the last stuff that I've done, even though we've got a contract. So yeah, needless to say, that will not be a brand that I will ever work with again. Uh, realistically, they'll probably not want to work with me again because I missed that deadline because they weren't paying me. But do you know what, like, I feel like I wasn't in the wrong there for terminating the contract, but also maybe maybe that I have a part to play in that, you know? <laughs> Leading on from that one, I have, what is it like working with Lucy and Yak? For those of you that don't know, I am a brand ambassador for Lucy and Yak, which is fab because when I joined with my management, they were like, what brands do you want to work with? And Lucy and Yak was literally the very top of my list. So this is, it's kind of a dream come true and I'm not being funny, but like that brand, takes care of me. They they are so kind, so nurturing. They are a really good brand to work with. That's I can only sing their praises. Like doing this job, you kind of, you get to know who kind of doesn't pay so well or, or doesn't pay on time. Uh, and Lucy and Yak just kind of exceeds my expectations on pretty much all fronts. Also, I think I definitely will always have a soft spot for them because they took me on my first ever like PR trip away. Uh, last August, they took me to We Out Here Festival. So I got to go to the festival and they set me up with a little tent because they had a stall at the festival. So I, I helped them make some content and then I made some content for my page. Um, and it was just it was just really wholesome and it was really lovely and like a really positive experience. And now the Lucy and Yak store has opened in Norwich. Um, I pop in there every now and then because my friend works there. And it's just, it's just a really nice festival and yeah I love that brand I love that brand so much the next one I've got I'm kind of like just picking them out from I'm not going in chronological order which is probably a bad idea because there's a couple that I've missed off but now that I'm thinking about it like I didn't really want to answer them so that's probably why I haven't the next one is uh what is the favorite era of your life so far um and I feel like it's a bit of a cliche but I think it's this one that I'm in right now I feel like I've never been mentally healthier and in a better place socially I love my life at the moment and it's all it's all very positive I love my flat I love my boyfriend I love my job I love my other job like it just it all seems to be going very well for me at the moment and I very much enjoy the position that I'm in and I feel like a lot of my life it's been kind of like oh, okay what's next what's next what's next so it's quite nice just to kind of bask in this where I'm at at the moment be like I'm enjoying it let's let's just keep it steady let's just let's just enjoy this do you know what I mean I feel like these are going to be the days that I'm going to look back on and have fond memories of which is really wholesome Okay, I'm gonna do two more questions uh, just because I feel like I've been rambling for quite a while now, um, but they kind of follow on from each other. So the first one is, do you want to do social media as your full-time job? And the next one is, where do you see yourself in five years? At the moment, 
no, I don't want to do social media as my full-time job. I really like the balance that I have with my retail job and social media. I feel like I've got a lot of time to be doing social media content creation kind of thing, but I also have like the, the accountability, the daily routine and the, the kind of social stuff that comes with having like a, a job with a team and I really really enjoy having both sides of that coin. So at the moment, no, I don't want to be full time with social media because I think if I did social media full time right now, if I like quit my job tomorrow, I think I would very quickly kind of, I, I think I'd lose it. Like I, I need to be leaving the house, going and getting my silly little coffee, putting on my silly little outfit and going and talking to customers. Like I, I need that for me right now. But in terms of where do I see myself in five years? Sure, it would be wicked to be able to do this full time like that. It's kind of what I've dreamed about since I was a kid. Literally, I've been doing this for years. Not this specifically, but this kind of social media thing I have been doing for years. So yeah, that is something that I've dreamt about for a long time. It would be amazing to be able to do it full time, but I don't want to put all of my eggs in one basket. I don't want to rush into anything. I think in five years time, I'd probably like to be living in a different city. Edinburgh would be the dream. Manchester would also be very lovely, but I know those are both very expensive places to live and we're in a cosy lives do you know what I mean it's some things just aren't very feasible and in five years time I would definitely like to be having a dog I want a little Italian greyhound and I want to call him Snoopy those are my goals <laughs> live in a different city with a dog those are actually I think those are quite manageable goals to be honest and also it is a bit of a cliche but I would like to travel more just like in the next five years like I, I'd like traveling to be kind of a thing that I do regularly because obviously since the pandemic and furloughs and not having enough money coming out of uni and stuff like traveling just hasn't been something I've been able to do so it would be it would be really nice to be able to do like little trips away and like city breaks and maybe seeing seeing the sights that kind of thing I'd love to be able to do that kind of thing more so I think I'm gonna leave it there because I have babbled on for a hot minute this is going to be a little bit of a nightmare to edit but it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you feel like you've got to know me a little bit better and I hope that you subscribe and maybe come back another time soon because it would be nice if you did. Why do I feel more nervous now saying goodbye than I did at the beginning? I don't know. Thanks for watching, uh, see you later, love you, bye. Follow me on Instagram, okay, bye. <laughs>